What's going on everyone? Sebastian here with Crypto News bringing you the best crypto news on a daily basis. Today, we're going to be talking about what the proof of stake algorithm is and I'm going to explain to you exactly what its features are and I'm going to walk through the benefits of proof of stake when compared to traditional proof of work mechanisms. Now, the reason why I'm super pumped to talk about this topic today is because more and more projects are incorporating the proof of stake mechanism to validate transactions on their specific blockchains. So as you understand more about what the proof of stake algorithm is, you'll be able to confidently vet more and more cryptocurrency projects and see which ones have the most long term potential. But before I get into it, I am giving away a Ledger Nano hardware wallet. So if you want a chance to win a Ledger Nano hardware wallet, then leave me a comment below. It can be literally about anything about this video or cryptocurrency in general, and you'll now have a chance to win a Ledger Nano hardware wallet. As projects such as Cardona, Solana, Polkadot, and Ethereum 2.0 become household names in the crypto industry, some may ask whether proof of stake will propel cryptocurrencies to new heights as regards to price and utility. Over the years, proof of stake protocols have been in development and they have attracted a ton of potential developers, investors, and supporters who want to see them grow. Whether proof of stake becomes the main consensus protocol in the future or not, it will most likely witness more growth. So what is proof of stake? According to the proof of stake principle, a person can mine or validate block transactions based on the number of coins they own. This implies that the more coins a miner has, the greater his mining power. Bitcoin and other crypto networks use a consensus algorithm known as proof of work. Consensus mechanisms in cryptocurrencies are what allow a whole system to function with individual computers or nodes. They employ consensus methods to determine the network's current agreed upon state. To be in consensus, every node must have the exact same copy of the blockchain and confirm the same rules. One of the primary benefits of decentralization is the absence of a centralized authority as the regulations that guide any blockchain are based on codes. An alternative to that is a centralized authority that dictates how a project runs, can make changes to the consensus, and censor or discriminate system participants. Blockchain technology functions as an open source digital ledger. What prevents other users from interfering with this digital ledger? This is what proof of work accomplishes on older networks. Proof of work ensures that the blockchain can't be tampered with by using hashes, which are large data strings of a specific length. Each block or data collection has undergone extensive computational validation. On the other hand, proof of stake is a consensus algorithm that utilizes validator nodes depending on the amount of staked coins. Proof of stake builds blocks by depending on validators who have staked tokens unlike the use of processing power in proof of work. Each validator is given a chance to win a block reward at random. However, despite its progress, the proof of stake idea is still relatively new and only time will tell if proof of stake will be the dominant consensus mechanism of the ever-evolving crypto world. So how does the proof of stake protocol work? The proof of stake protocol employs a pseudo random nomination process to choose a node to be the validator of the next block. This is dependent on a number of parameters, including randomization, staking age, and the wealth of the node. It is worth noting that in proof of stake protocols, blocks are forged and not mined. Cryptocurrencies that use proof of stake frequently begin by selling pre-mined coins or they begin with the proof of work mechanism after which they migrate to proof of stake. Whereas in proof of work based systems, more and more assets are generated as a reward for miners. Transaction fees are often used as a reward in proof of stake blockchains. Users that wish to partake in the forging process must deposit a particular number of coins into the network as their stake. The stake size influences a node's chances of being chosen as the next validator to generate the next block. The larger the stake, the better the chances. More unique approaches are being introduced to the selection process to ensure that the process does not favor only the richest nodes in the network. You should note that randomized block selection and coin age selection are the two most regularly utilized approaches. The randomized block selection technique selects validators by looking for nodes with the highest 
stake and lowest hash value, and because stake sizes are public, the other nodes can typically predict the next forger. The coin age selection technique selects nodes depending on the length of time their tokens have been staked. The protocol calculates the coin age by multiplying the number of coins staked by the number of days the coins have been kept as staked. Once a node forges a block, its age is reset to zero and it must wait a specific amount of time before forging another block. This prevents high staking nodes from controlling the network. Every proof of stake driven blockchain creates its own guidelines depending on what they believe is best for the ecosystem. When a node is next in line to forge, it will evaluate the validity of every transaction in the block, sign the block, and add it to the blockchain. It then receives the transaction fees linked to that particular block as a reward. If a node wishes to stop forging, it can remove its stake coupled with the rewards after a period of time. This allows the network to verify that every block added to the blockchain is legitimate. So what are the strengths and weaknesses of proof of stake protocol? Proof of stake addresses some of the shortcomings of the proof of work algorithm that support cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. Proof of stake fundamentally removes entry barriers to the validation process. Users are no longer needed to purchase specialized machines in order to have a shot at obtaining the block reward. As a result, proof of stake consumes less computing power than proof of work and so has a lower effect on the environment. Conversely, some proof of stake networks have major weaknesses depending on the variance used to define the stake in a network. Block producers of some coins may wield an incredible amount of power if the number of block producers in a network is low and they get to validate all transactions. However, a producer's power can be automatically revoked anytime he or she does anything against the network's best interests. If, for example, a producer of EOS coin fails to work on any blocks for 24 hours, a backup quickly takes his or her place. The second major weakness is that the number of proof of stake systems favor wealthy users the more coins you stake the more you can vote. Networks like Cardona have addressed this issue with the implementation of randomized selection of block producers. In this case, the wealthier users still have a better chance of being a block producer, but the outside influence of crypto whales, who are participants holding far more coins of a particular network than the average user, is diminished. So what does the future hold for the proof of stake protocol? At the moment, Bitcoin is destined to remain one of the major cryptocurrencies. However, given the increasing need for energy efficient consensus algorithms, proof of stake protocols will almost certainly continue to play an important part in the overall development of the blockchain industry. More than 400 projects now use proof of stake as their consensus mechanism, and we will likely see more growth in the near future. All right, I would love to know exactly what you think about the proof of stake algorithm and how you think it compares to the traditional proof of work mechanisms incorporated by Bitcoin and other layer one technologies. So please share what you think the strengths and weaknesses are of both networks. And as always, if you found this video resourceful, please smash that like button. It does help support this channel and it does mean the world to me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all on tomorrow's video.